Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. If you hear any purring noises, you're welcome. He's right there a foot away from the computer, so there's bound to be some purr, I don't know, interruptions? But that's okay, that's how we're filming this tonight. We are here to do A, we meaning B, Bean, and me. Here to do a standalone book review of one of my favorite books, so I'm a little nervous to share it with you. Ta-da! Jacqueline Winspear, Messenger of Truth. And this is the fourth in the Maisie Dobbs series. And you've probably heard me talk about Maisie Dobbs, but it's like 17 books long, so there's a lot to talk about. And this one is actually my favorite ahead of the first book. So... I thought I'd explain a little about why it's so great, this one in particular, and the series in general, although I didn't prepare for that as much. Anyway, <laughs> so if you were around to hear me talk about the time and place tag where books made me think of a specific time and place of reading them, this is like that times a hundred, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. But I would say it's a very good novel for people who are feeling uh, lost or purposeless. And so that's why at a certain part of my life, I remember like thinking, reading this and identifying it with it so wholeheartedly. Um, it might be uh, after a breakup as part of it or other things that contribute to this, but it was just very resonant with my life experience at the time. So if you haven't heard me talk about Maisie Dobbs, what is it about? So the, the cover tells you much of the story. It's a mystery. It is about a woman detective. She lives in London for the most part. Um, the series starts after the Great War and has progressed to World War II. And basically it's about this woman, Maisie Dobbs, who starts out as a coster monger's daughter. So she's very working class. She goes to work as a servant in a house and through who she knows and her innate talent and her right place at the right time, she gets recruited by someone who was one of the first pathologists, Maurice Blanche. And so she, by leaps and bounds, gets to change her position in society. So we get a very unique view of someone who was working class and is now quite comfortable and starting her own detective business um, of the crimes that she investigates, which is super fascinating at this point in time and in this place for me anyway. So what else do we have in this book? We've got a plot that is fairly simple when I like sketched it out. It's all in the relationships that we see and the different ways that people interact that makes it so fascinating. The plot is actually pretty simple. It's revealed very cleverly, so 100% for that. The characters are very richly drawn from life, so you've got people representing different interests, different trades, different ages, different classes. Um, uh, she has had people from different parts of the world and ethnic backgrounds, but not in this book so much. Um, and yeah, the, like I was saying, the characters really, it's how they dance with each other that is so fascinating. I think the book does a really good job of setting each other off. And that I use that term advisedly because... To set something off can be when you put it in relief, like an art, and it makes it pop, and it's a good thing. Or to set someone off in a bad way, it means that like you push their buttons and like they explode, right? On s'éclate. So there's a different, two different interpretations, and both apply in this case, which I thought was funny. So the characters are great, um, and the setting, setting sucker right here, is very firmly felt. So from the beginning, when we're um, starting out with Maisie Dobbs in her first adventure, we're put right in with the slang, like the um, Cockney slang, not rhyming slang, but just like slang of London, um, as well as what people are wearing, how people are saving money, like the fog on the river when she walks around, you get a lot of neighborhood information. So it's very firmly set in London of the time in the 20s and 30s, which is great. I love it. And then the piece de resistance, the themes. So here's where I did my little like bit of sketching work. 
So um, when I thought first of messenger of truth, and that's a key phrase that she uses in several of her books, it's one of the life lessons that the pathologist teaches her is that coincidence is a messenger of truth. And it's very interesting to think about that and like ponder that in your own life. If coincidence sometimes brings something to your attention that is necessary for something. But this book in particular, we are taken into the art world. We are taken into the world of war. We have a different family represented. Sorry, I didn't mean to flip you off. We have class differences and clashes definitely occurring. We have a breakup and all of that 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 subsumes into it. We've got the themes of grief and I, I'm not going to spoil it. So it's just like the theme of grief, um, as well as risk and regret. And so like all these washing around, sort of pinging off different characters at different times. And Maisie as the main character does a phenomenal job as a filter of considering all these things coming across her desk, if you, if you will, um, and filtering them for the reader in um, a very gentle way, a very compassionate way. and as I said, a coincidental, like putting concepts together way, which I just think is so good. I love how she does this for, for us. The convictional character does the work for us, right? So yeah, um, I will read the beginning quote. There's a couple quotes. And the first one I thought was the, the most like fiery, that was great, from Paul Nash, who was an artist from 1899 to 1946 is when he lived. And Paul Nash served with the Artist Rifles and the Royal Hampshire Regiment in the Great War. So he's an artist soldier. The quote is, I am no longer an artist interested and anxious. I am a messenger who will bring back word from the men who are fighting to those who want the war to go on forever. Feeble, inarticulate will be my message, but it will have a bitter truth and may it burn in their lousy souls. Whew. Right? So, sorry, B. So you get a, a very like fiery starting shot to this, to this book. And that very, it's not indignation. It's, uh, it's like a fiery pit of um, anger at injustice, which of course is a winning theme with me. And uh, if you've read my books, you will know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so it just starts you off on that like fiery note and then just keeps going sort of like this, like different circles, different relationships, revealing the plot, but also like getting deeper into these themes, which is so good. Um, what else can I say? I call this, uh, I'm calling this now, since I've had to consider it, my favorite novel as an adult. So taking apart the nonfiction that I love, um, I think the... <sighs> The identification that we do with the characters in this is just so valuable for people who are going through a hard time because Maisie's going through a hard time. She does things she regrets. She considers whether to change her path and be independent or um, not. And you see it through this one case and the people she interacts with, her employee, uh, the person who is who she's seeing um and the person who engages her for the case and some of the other main characters in the story sort of go to the background because there's so much going on in the foreground so i think there's just like really thoughtful choices that the author made and so super super jacqueline winspear fan super fan um but yeah so that's all I really got to say about it. I know sometimes it's hard to say what we like about a book. It's much easier to say what we hate about it. And there were a couple parts in here, sure, that were like stating things in a way that was confusing or stating things in a way that was obvious, perhaps, at least on a reread. I just reread this for this review. So it's, uh, it's bright in my mind. But overall, I love the way she writes. I love the way she writes characters. Um, I never want the series to end. And so I would definitely recommend this book for people who are looking for a good historical mystery or a mystery that um, delves sort of like the darkness of the human heart 
or who are waffling on decisions or who are just feeling sort of friendless and alone and have made a decision to be independent and are sort of suffering the consequences. Um, so I hope that doesn't give anything away. <laughs> But there you have it, Jacqueline Winspear's Messenger of Truth, my favorite novel as an adult. And go out and read it. I'll include a link down below with the bookshop affiliate link so um, you can support independent bookstores while you buy it. So there we go. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all those things. Share the video if you know someone who is in one of those categories. And I'll see you on the next video.